Here we're going to be talking about transformations, but this time stretches and reflections. When we're doing stretches, that's why I thought of this dog stretching. I thought it was cute. So if we're going to do some vertical stretches, how do we do that? Well, we have this equation y equals, and we're going to put a letter in front of the f of x. That's the key thing. If you see a letter in front of it, that tells you it's a vertical stretch. Okay, so something like this right here, for example, um, I could say it's a you know, vertical stretch. I'll write this down like this. I'll say vertical stretch by uh, a factor of p. So whatever that letter was. So example could be, you know, if I have something like, um, I don't know, let's say p equals 2. Let's say, so that in other words, I have y equals 2 f of x. What does that mean? It means stretch by a factor of 2. What does that mean? That means that you take your function, whatever it was, and you stretch it, almost like it's a rubber band. You stretch it vertically. You stretch. But that means that if you're right on the x-axis, you don't stretch at all. That's the interesting part. So it's all related to how far you are from the x-axis. So everything will get like double as far. Well, if you weren't at all off the x-axis, then you don't change. Let me show you with a graph here. So we'll do sine x is my parent function or my family of functions here. So let me just draw what a sine x normally looks like. So I'm going to try to do that one. It looks like this. I'll just do the first period at least of sine x, something like that. Oops, I made the bottom look like it goes more than the top. Something like this. There we go. And this right here would normally be mm, 2 pi. This would be pi. This would be pi over 2. This here would be 3 pi over 2. We do a lot more of that in trig, so don't worry. In case you don't know about this, we spend a lot of time in trigonometry about this. But it goes up to 1 and negative 1. Now, this one right here, what does it mean to do this 2 in front? Is stretch by a factor of 2. What does that mean? That means everything gets twice as far. So that means this one right here, instead of being, let me just uh, maybe put some other numbers here. I'll make a 2 and I'll make it a minus 2 here. So everything then will get stretched by twice as much. So this point, which was normally right here, will actually be up here. This point, however, will still stay the same because it was at the x-axis. This point stays the same, but this point, which is at minus 1, that doubles, so that's here. This one goes here. So in other words, it's going to look like something like this. I'm not super good at drawing these, but you get the idea. So it just stretches by a factor of 2. All right. Now let's do a horizontal stretch. This is again, uh, remember what I taught you before, if it's something within the bracket, then it does the opposite of what you might think. So we'll do f of, uh, maybe I'll call it q, qx, there we go. So what does that mean? Now this is the important part here, it's opposite of what you think. So for example, um, you might think that it you know, stretches by something, but in fact it'll compress. So it just does the opposite of what you think. So, or if it's a half, you think, oh, it gets half as big. Nope, it gets twice as big. So this is this is stretching horizontally. So this is going to go like this, like, like that, stretching that way. So let me show you by doing a graph of sine of 2x. See, here it was 2 sine x. Notice it was outside of the function. That's why it's a number in front. Here, however, it's a number that's inside the bracket. So what does this mean? This 2 right here means, um, well, you'd think it might stretch by a factor of 2, but no, it compresses. Okay, compresses by 2, horizontally, of course. So that means uh, it's going to get squished, in this case right here, squished. So let's take a look and see what that might look like. So I'm going to do a little sketch here again, and I'm going to do my little um, diagram that I did before with this one here going up and then down and up like this. This is my regular old 1 minus 1 here. This value right here is 2 pi. So this is pi. So this is pi over 2. So this one here is 1, 2. This is 3 pi over 2. All right. So what happens to this? Now, everything, its distance from the y-axis gets uh, compressed, in this case right here, by a factor of 2. So uh, let me just do the main one right here. So this one here, which was at 2 pi, it's going to become over here. Boom. And this one right here is going to become over here. Boom. So it's going to do something like, uh, like
like this. There you go. So do you see, it looks like it got squished. So you took the whole thing and you squished it, see? So that's, and of course it'll squish that way too. The whole thing will get squished. Of course I can continue it, right? I can, I can have it keep going forever. I'm just trying to show you the first period of this. So what happened again, opposite of what you might think if it's in the bracket, just like with the translations. Um, and there we go. We've also got reflections. That's why I thought this cat here was self-reflecting, huh? Uh, we have different kinds of reflections as well. And this is, by the way, after we're done this, we've got them all here. So we've got f equals minus f of x, something like this. So if we have a minus in front of the bracket, or in front of the function. By contrast, we're going to have f equals, uh, sorry, y equals f of minus x. Do you notice that's inside? So there's going to be the distinction here between the two of them. This one reflects across the x-axis. So for example, if we want to do y equals minus x squared, normally, remember what an x squared looks like? Normally an x squared does this, right? It goes up instead of parabola. What does a minus in front of it mean? It means, oh, we reflect across the x-axis. So now it makes it sad. In other words, it goes down. All right. And this here, we can reflect across the y-axis as well. So this, you notice, it's not a minus in front of it, it's a minus inside the bracket. So I'm going to take my uh, family of functions here, I'm going to take my uh, basic one, which is going to be my square root. Uh, square root looks like this, normally. And what happens with this one here? I'm going to reflect it across the y-axis, so it's going to be like this. You can think it makes sense because this thing at positive x values, let's say I said x equals positive 1 over here, it doesn't exist. Right? This purple one doesn't exist there. Why is that? Because you can't take a square root of a negative and get a real number. It's a complex number that we're drawing real here. All right, we're almost done. But pro tip, uh, order is important for combination translation, so we can do things like two things at a time. So what does this really mean here? This one right here. This means, let's see, a number in front of the x, uh, in front of the function, that means we're going to stretch, you know, vertically, you know, by a factor of three. So that means things are going to go like this. Okay, they're going to get sort of stretchier that way. And what does this one over here mean? What does that plus two mean? It means you go up by two, because it's a horizontal translation. Oh, sorry, vertical translation. So we're going to stretch by a factor of three because it's multiplying here, and we're going to add two. See, we're doing combination ones, right? See, we're, we're combining the different things we've learned. So um, this one right here, let's think about what's going to happen to it if I wanted to sketch it. So this one here would look like this, and I'm going to, again, consider my basic uh, x squared one like this. That's what an x squared would look like. And I'm going to do what to it? I'm going to first, I'm going to stretch it by a factor of three, so it's going to get a lot steeper. Can you imagine that getting steeper? And then I'm going to bring it up by two. And then I'm going to go, well, one, two. So now it's going to have a vertex right here. It's only been shifted up by two, so it's there. Whoops. And it's going to be a lot steeper. So it's hard to draw that with a quadratic, but I don't know, I'll make it look, you know, steeper. But you could do it with numbers, but keep in mind, it's been stretched you know, the whole thing, just imagine everything's just been stretched up by a factor of three. Something like this would be important. Now, um, all the combinations are uh, allowed. In fact, in trigonometry, we have some uses for it. So why should you care about these? Well, transformations are everywhere. If you've ever played any 3D computer games, the entire world that they create around you is translated. As your character is walking and moving, the program, or the engine as we call it, uh, is somehow translating the entire world around. And that's done by you know, rotations, that's done by reflections, that's done by horizontal and vertical stretches and translations. So it's kind of cool. Uh, stars going across the sky, if you wait long enough uh, and watch them, there is, you know, trigonometry. We're going to see in the trigonometry topic, we've got tons of this stuff. This is absolutely related to this. So the generic way we write, um, for example, a sign would be like this. Uh, hey, look, we just put them all together. Now they call them A, B, C, D, but it doesn't matter. What does this one do? That's in front of the function. Oh, it must be a vertical stretch. What is this one right here inside the bracket? Ooh, that's a compression. What's the plus C here? Oh, you think it goes to the right by something? Nope, it goes to the left by that C. And this plus D, that means it goes up by this. So these translations that we've just been learning about are absolutely linked to trig. So in this trigonometry topic, for example, 
uh, this becomes extremely important here, okay, as far as your math is concerned. Also, like I said, just really cool stuff in everyday life. But this is going to be really, really important trigonometry. And when we do that section, you see my videos on that. You're going to see I'm just going to refer to, hey, it's just like the translations and the um, stretches that we've done. So that's what we're going to be doing here.